How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Great. I got to, uh, I was telling you this backstage, I got to rewatch episodes three, four, and five this morning, which is probably like the best work day of my life is to just sit there and watch TV. Th this was a, uh, this was a different story when it was conceived of. Uh, it was a story based off, in part, off of a book that my, my former colleague Brian Stelter wrote um, about morning television, about the relationship between Matt Lauer and Ann Curry. Then Me Too happened, and Me Too also happened to, among other people, Matt Lauer. How do you, how did you lace these two narratives, and what are the, what are the big sort of takeaways from you guys having done one season, now working on season two, um, just about where the media industry is at in light of the Me Too movement and the kind of story you were trying to tell? What was the beginning of the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, so the, me, the media industry is, in, in my view, exciting enough if you just start with all the egos and the drama right, yes. and, and the power struggles, yeah. and, and also an industry that is very much sort of under siege a bit by, by tech, which is mm -hmm. something that's discussed in the show. But then you add on this whole layer of the Me Too movement. Right. And I guess what I'm wondering is how did you navigate telling both those stories at the same time? And what were you hoping to explore, particularly in light of the Me Too movement? Um, I mean, I just thought it was, it was really, uh, a f honestly, a fun challenge to combine those things. Um, and I, I say fun in the sense that I like what I do. I don't mean, hey, it's fun to write about Me Too. Um, but it was interesting to take a world that is so often superficial and silly and full of egos, full of um, <clears throat> power moves, um, and, and drop into it something that was very real and that everybody had to function around. Um, and that was, that was just super interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of complexities here. I think one thing the show does very well is these, these things are not black and white. And you mm -hmm. have to, you know, there's a lot of tension. I think there's the tension between Mitch, the sort of Matt Lauer figure, mm -hmm. people who have known him for a long time, who mm -hmm. understand he's a multifaceted person, and also women who have very much suffered mm -hmm. uh, under his tenure at the, at the news organization. How do you, what were you guys, I, I guess, let's just talk about season one. What are you hoping to achieve in terms of that conversation? Well, tell me if you want to jump in. No, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not looking at you, so I can't tell when you're ready to talk. <laughs> um, uh, I do feel like there are things that are black and white. So uh, to me, the show isn't about, oh, it isn't black or white. Um, there's people that do bad things. Um, as a society, we have to live with that and decide how to handle it. And I think that the show is more about that aspect of it. Um, the people trying to function around this new um, world order that is, you know, come into all of our lives um, for good reason. I agree. I think, I almost think you're underselling some of the nuances of, of the, the writing that went into this. I mean, there, take friends, in fact, let's, let's go ahead. I was gonna say this for later. Let's go ahead yeah. and show this clip now. Okay. There's a great clip when um, Mitch Kessler, the Matt Lauer figure, uh, he's at his house and, mm -hmm. and Jennifer Aniston shows up mm -hmm. in the rain yeah. and they sort of discuss what's happened after he's been fired from the network mm -hmm. for sexual misconduct. Yeah. We, let's see if we can show that. So that, this is what I'm talking about. There's a lot. It's, it's, it's a great scene. There's a lot to explore there. There's a lot of lives that are affected by the decisions yes. he made. Yeah. Which is not to say, I, my response was not to say there is not nuance within relationships. There absolutely is. But I don't think there's nuance about did he do a bad thing. Oh, no, yeah. for sure. Right. Yeah. And we just, you know, we were exploring these characters. And these characters, uh, there's a lot of grays. There's a lot of nuance in everything they're feeling. and and. And yeah, he did a bad thing. And uh, it's an interesting discussion about how bad is bad. You know, well, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's, there's, um, there's a tension between, it seems to me, three different things, which is there are the folks who are trying to protect the network and protect the status quo, uh, even when it's not necessarily morally yeah. right. 
Uh, there's Bradley Jackson, placed by Reese Witherspoon, who, who seems very much preoccupied with, with the pursuit of the truth and with, mm -hmm. um, with morality. And then there's Billy Crudup, who's the head of the television network, who understands that he just wants to see good entertainment mm -hmm. on screen. What did you guys learn about the news industry when you were making this show and those tensions there? Well, I think it's a huge responsibility to deliver news. I think that the... Um, I think the stress and anxiety of that filters into everybody's daily life. Uh, and I was fascinated by that aspect of it. Um, I think that there's, anytime you're doing anything where you're laying out the truth, it's a huge responsibility. And people are imperfect. And they have um, their own needs. They have their own agendas. They have, you know, and, and that's why it's such a complicated uh, world and it's so interesting because there is nothing completely pure in it even though it's supposed to be representing the truth. Right. Do you guys, do you worry about people seeing this too, as, as too much a sort of interpretation of specific individuals like Matt Lauer and like NBC? Well, you know, obviously this character is an amalgamation of, of many men. Um, it is not, it's, it, he's his own character. He's not Matt Lauer. And I don't, I don't think we worry about it. No. You know, at all. I mean, it, it sort of comes with the territory though. It's like we, the, the project is based on a morning show. <laughs> and if you're going to put me too into it, it's, it's sort of apparent that's the, what you do, you know? Right, right. Um, this is the first, this is the inaugural Apple TV Plus show. It was the first, one of the first shows made. It was heavily marketed. Is it, you, you guys have a lot of experience in Hollywood. You've worked on a lot of shows. Is there a difference working for Apple TV? Yeah. What is that? I mean, there are differences and there are not differences. Um, it, it's the first time I've ever worked with a brand new network which mm -hmm. was about a brand new streaming service, you know, but that serves as a network. That was really interesting um, in terms of developing a brand new show, um, also with a brand new studio. Um, so it was a lot of brand new. Uh, was the creative process different? They were very supportive, and I would say I had more freedom. More freedom? Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. They were, uh, they were a great... Uh, network to work with. Um, I've had a lot of firsts. Um, I directed the first DreamWorks movie, and you know it. Um, it's all when you start a new relationship, you're always, you know, feeling it out. Like, how is yeah. it going to be? Is this going to be? You know, am I going to be able to tell the story I want to tell? Are we going to be able to do what we do without interference? Or negative interference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were uh, real great collaborators. And because, you know, they came from Sony Television. So it really wasn't any different for, for us mm -hmm. than working with HBO. Or, you know, and, you know, the thing about first times is, is very interesting. It can become very intimidating to, to, to launch. You know, if you really think about launching a studio or launching a network, we don't work that way. We don't think... As artists, we don't think that way at all. You know, we think about the story we're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. How are we best going to tell the story? Mm -hmm. You know, what color is the set? Mm -hmm. You know, what is this character's arc? What are we feeling? What is the story that we're trying to tell? That's what we think about. Because we cannot, as, as artists, really think about the tech part of it, the launch part of it. Yeah. I mean, at least I can't. No, sure. you can't. Although there are certain weak moments <laughs> where, where I'd be like, how did I get responsible for this? <laughs> because that, it's kind of Wait, you huge. mean how did you get responsible launching for Apple. launching Apple? Yeah. 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 I mean, That's it, not, they're it was, only it the biggest slightly company. intimidating, <laughs> yeah. I, I tried to not think about that too much. Yeah, denial. There, what's that? Denial. denial. You just live in denial. It's... Um, there were report, there was at least one report that Tim Cook was sort of very cautious and, 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 and wanted family-friendly content and didn't want anything too risque. And mm -hmm. then you watch the pilot episode and it's just full of all sorts of, mm -hmm. you know, 
fuck you this and sexual innuendo and sort of refreshingly risque. Um, you are not responsible for the tech part of it, but <laughs> there, there is this, we're, we're at this crazy time, which is why this conference that, that Peter's put on has been so great, which is there is incredible disruption taking place in Hollywood. Yep. Te the tech firms are moving in in a really big way. I think there's quite a bit of skepticism. Apple has very deep pockets. Mm -hmm. they, they clearly hired people from Sony and they, you guys, and they, they are, seem to be making a good faith effort. But I think there's a lot of skepticism about whether or not they know what they're doing. This show launched to, to somewhat mixed reviews, mm -hmm. um, to say the least. Has that, how do you guys, how do you, how do you take the launch of this show, you're now five episodes are public, you look at those reviews, not all of them are favorable. I think Apple TV Plus for a lot of people is still sort of an unknown quantity. The show launches, people maybe don't know exactly where to go to watch it. What is that like for you, just in terms of, you put out this incredible product and then? Well, I think, as Mimi was saying, we are focused on the story we're telling, the characters, all, we're, we're inside of it. So when you see reviews that are very much looking at it from the whole business aspect and like, what is Apple doing? And they spent this much money on it. And you know, it's like, it's kind of separate from us, you know, um, in this, I, I mean, we're responsible. You know, it's not like we were out um, giving away money to people. I would have loved to do that, but, um, <laughs> It, yeah, I mean, it, it, so I it, honestly, you just have to kind of like uh, with reviews, you you read them, and you let them go. Yeah, good, good and bad ones. Yeah. You know, you well, I like the good ones, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I just kind of when those reviews came in, I I didn't know what show they were watching, and I just kind of thought they were nuts, and I just felt there were a lot of Apple haters and wanting Apple to fail, and. Look, you know, any, every, you know, one show, not everyone is going to love one show. But the reviews very much felt like an attack on Apple. And they, they, were, did, pretty, mean, they were pretty attackish, a lot of them. Do yeah. you mean you felt like people wrote the reviews on, like on their way to see the pilot? Like you felt like people had a premeditated I, I do feel that. There were a lot of very well, well-tuned Apple jokes in a uh -huh. lot of them. <laughs> So you, I guess what I'm asking is you feel like the the creative product was being judged through the lens of this larger... Oh, 100%. Con ...about tech. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just not fair. And so we... I you mean, know, it's a business, life is not though, fair. and that's the job. It's like right. the job is they look at it as a, as a show and as a business, and I get that, you know? But it's like that's why you can't yeah. really... I, the good news is, yeah. is that people love the show. And, you know, we love the show, and that matters. You have you have admirably thick skin. I think what I the reason it seems to matter to me is because, with all of these new services starting, if you are a member of the creative community, maybe you say, you know what? Well, now it's different because they got bought by AT and T, and it's a different equation. But you know, I know what HBO is, for mm -hmm. instance, right? I know I know Casey Bloys. I know the creative mm -hmm. process there. I know the kind of marketing my show is going to get. I know they're going to take care of it. Is there, I guess what I'm wondering is having been through the ringer with this, is there some trepidation about working with some of these firms that maybe don't know what they're doing and where you maybe will be judged through a different lens? I, I this is a weird statement, but I enjoy um, the challenge of not having everything locked down. Oh, good. And working with people who do not have everything locked down because there's pitfalls to that too. You know, there's overdevelopment at places where you develop something for two years, it doesn't get made. Um, every place has its has its thing, um, and I, I kind of enjoyed the um, pioneer aspect of this. Mm -hmm. You as well. Yeah, um, you know the uh, uh, yeah they you know they of course have gone through some growing pains, you know in marketing and um, but. I like the pioneer aspect as well. I mean, I've worked at HBO and they do have it down and they are great. And I was praying, you know, that these, uh, that our trailers were as good as HBO's. And when they presented them, they were. <laughs> and that was quite a relief. So yeah, it's, a, it's always a journey. It's always something different. And 
you just have to be there to kind of lead and this is how we want the show to be presented. We think, you know, we are presented with ideas, but we certainly are in control of those ideas to some extent that are being put out there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna open up for questions in just two minutes for whoever has questions. You guys are now working on season two. I'm yes. guessing there's not a lot you can talk about. Is the, is the creative process for you different um, having gone through this once and having seen the critical reviews? Is it different for you just because the sort of politics of the world are changing and your show addresses those head on? What are you thinking going into season two that you weren't thinking going into season one? Well, the, what the next step is. Of, of the world of the show. You know, the, if you're dealing with these large subjects that are societal and they affect society, it's like, what does the next version of that look like? Mm -hmm. The next stage of that. Mm -hmm. Can you give us any teasers? <laughs> well, <laughs> not, not, not really, not yet. But, um, I mean, no, I can't without basically giving away the end of the season. Yeah. So that's, that's okay. the hard part. It's off the record. Yeah. We'll keep it private. <laughs> uh, well, look, I, it, um, we'll open it up for questions now if anyone has any. I, I personally am of the opinion that it's a great show. That that either means it's a great show or it means I'm a really bad critic. Uh, <laughs> or maybe it's a media, I'm just a media reporter and you hit me in the sweet spot. All right. uh, hey, uh, my name's Ben from the Wall Street Journal. Hi, um, Ben. Hey, uh, you mentioned that uh, folks were really digging the show. I'm curious what Apple has told you about how many people are watching it and um, what the demographics are and those, those various things and what you can say about it? Um, well, they've told us nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're very secretive. Actually, I mean, they, they, I do know they've the demographics told. were very good. Yeah. I, I can't give you a number, but they're, they're very happy about them. Yeah, they're, they're super happy. It, it, but, you know, and... We're not. They haven't fired us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is that is that something that you guys want to know? Like, would you like to see those numbers? Are you? Yeah. I don't. Sort of... I don't really love to know that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I would I love, to know, that. You would love to know that. I want to stay inside <laughs> the fictional universe. Uh huh. I want to be tortured. <laughs> Go ahead. Tim, I'm from Nielsen. <laughs> oh, good. You've got numbers. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God someone here has numbers. Well, and I'm actually from the Grace Notes side where we do the data and we work with Apple on a lot of technology as well. But one of the questions I had was for you guys personally about the measurement side of it. And it's not me pushing the Nielsen agenda. I mean, you guys have created an awesome show. My girlfriend and I love it. So keep Thank it up. Thank you. Um, don't spoil it. Don't listen to this guy. <laughs> Um, but honestly, what do you guys feel personally? I mean, I think you guys were even almost saying you were divided as far as your own metrics for how you keep track, you know, of popularity or measurement as far as ratings or just how do you guys see the future? Speak maybe from your own souls. You're not on, you're not speaking for Apple here. Just what is your guys' opinions? About how you, how you sort of, um... How do you want to be measured this show in the future? Well, I mean, I hope it would have a long life. I hope that it would have themes that that are um, resonant that will that you can look at in the future and look back at, and um, that it will have something to offer still. Would you? Will there be numbers to that, or just a commentary? I don't. <laughs> I don't know the numbers. No, I know you don't. <laughs> I'm asking, what do you see the future of streaming? I mean, this is what we're talking about for a couple of days. Is, is the know. world of streaming anecdotal and its commentary by the water cooler, or is you know Rotten Tomatoes going to be your metric, or I do use the them. worst critic out there? Like, I, I mean, how do I you use all that measured? stuff. <laughs> I use all that stuff and Twitter. Yeah. I use all that stuff just to get some sense of feedback. Yeah, for sure. I didn't understand. That's what you were asking. Yeah, right. just, yeah. You what, measured as a guy from Nielsen, what numbers would you measure the show? I mean, what 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 do you think success looks like in the streaming age for a show? I think success has to be reinvented. This is me speaking personally. Again, yeah. I'm more from the tech and data. Do side, you want the but, chair? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I do think it has to, measurement needs to be reinvented for a world where people have siloed sandboxes, where people have measurement data directly, consumption mm -hmm. data. There's zeitgeist, there's pop culture, there's yeah. commentary, there's... There's uh, residuals. There's real-time feedback. There's a lot of business tied around <laughs> the you measurement know, side. There's of a it, lot right? of things so, that need measurement. Yeah. yeah, I know Nielsen's looking at it from the side that I'm not part of, but um, I think you guys have a, lot, a big say in how you want to be measured, and the more vocal you are about it... I how, think do we, what, how, how do you have... 
How would a person like me say how I want to be measured? I have an opinion, I guess. But I, but I don't under, I don't even under, because this is one of the reasons I didn't want to do this is because I'm like, <laughs> I know nothing about this business <laughs> of tech. Um, are you, are you so I'm asking for your advice. Well, I think, I think the advice would be think about how it impacts you, right? Measurement could impact everything from the rate you get paid on your next uh -huh. job. It could measure, you know, the, again, pop culture reception of something. Sure. Everybody yeah. runs to box office mm -hmm. for the first weekend when clearly Rotten Tomatoes sometimes mm -hmm. disagrees with that. Yeah. How do we as consumers, you know, handle that type of dis different opinion, right? And so I think yeah. it does have a big impact, and I think... Because it impacts you, I think there's an opinion to be formed. What if you didn't want things to be measured? <laughs> what if you just wanted to put it out there and not measure it? I think that's like saying I don't want it, my show to be talked about. I don't know that you can... No, they can it. talk about it. <laughs> because I, I'd say this yeah. only because of my experience on Friday Night Lights, um, Bates Motel. We very rarely had <laughs> any sense of real numbers. It was like, well, it's kind of, it's in this, it's in this range. That, but they didn't, they didn't pull us off the air, so we were happy. And we made the show we wanted to make. And beyond that, so in that sense, like, because I remember, because I've worked in the business a long time, and I remember when the Nelson ratings were super important and you lived or died on them. And I have to say, when I was doing Friday Night Lights and DirecTV picked us up from NBC, and we started kind of not knowing. We just know we had two years to tell a story. It was kind of awesome, you know? So I do understand what you're saying. Um, I think, I think I mean, from I like a business Bates and Hotel. a realistic <laughs> sense, yeah. I get it. From an artistic and a personal sense, I kind of enjoy not knowing. <laughs> Yeah. I think uh, just because we're out of time, just to, to put a bow on this, I think what, what you're, it's a great question. The, the ratings, the metrics by which we measure success are, with all due respect to Nielsen, are terrible. And they're terrible in, in an age when we have um, unprecedented access to data. So someone somewhere is going to have to figure out a better way to understand that, well, no one watched The Wire in season one or two, that it then broke out to become what many people think is one of the best shows. Some people might understand that not every show has to live or die on its opening weekend at the box office or every movie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, There's a lot more to measure. That's yes. Right. There seems yeah. to me to be immense opportunity there. On the creative side, uh, again, I think it's a great show. Um, Thank Thanks. you guys for coming out and thank you for thank doing you. this. Thank you so much. Cheers.